Chris, I'm sure we'll let us know who you are, but maybe if you could first introduce yourself and, and your work and we'll go from there. Um, my name is Christopher Birch. Um, I'm a maker from St. Louis, Missouri, originally. I started doing murals maybe about 10 to 12 years ago as a means of just creating, because I like large scale works, but oftentimes I found myself in spaces that couldn't accommodate large scale work. So murals for me were a way to kind of satiate that. So um, I noticed you use the word storyteller and I read some interviews with you where you describe yourself as a storyteller, a craftsperson, a trickster, um, but not necessarily an artist. And it sounds like there's a there's a reason for that about the way we give words meaning. Can you yeah. talk a little about what, what those words mean for you? For me, being a storyteller is, 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 is aligned with being a communicator. Um, and for me, it, it keeps me humble to the point where it's more about a crass person. It's more about staying constantly engaged and continuing a rigorous practice in order to move through these ideas. Because there's so many things we experience on a human level. So how do we engage with everything that we experience? And so um, I tend to call myself a, 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 a storyteller or a, a maker to keep myself engaged within a process of exploration of self within a multitude of different experiences. And it's also a way in which I can refine my ways of communicating with people. For me, I think that some of the greatest artists that I've known were storytellers. You know, um, I think about Richard Pryor, I think about James Baldwin, I think about Ralph Ellenson. These are all amazing artists, but their cruxes really understanding how to communicate a human experience to people that don't have their same experiences. And I think that's an amazing artist. It's a great tie into what this mural actually represents, right? The, the experience of a black person in San Francisco or in the Bay Area. What does it represent to belong in a space that's rapidly changing? Um, not just even this neighborhood, but this area in general. Um, this is actually, I believe the second mural that sort of has this similar imagery. I know you have another one downtown yeah but turk and levin road turk and Leavenworth, yeah, yeah. and and um tell me about the the images that represent this this theme for you about creating belonging particularly working with public mm -hmm. works i mean there's there's definitely a, a statement in that because yeah. it's not it's not a gallery show you right, know it's right. it's a it's a piece of art that people see and encounter on the street mm -hmm. um i think with the images that i use um i really try to find a, a, a deeply personal connection to them. Um, so what I see is a lot of negative images around blackness, negative narratives around blackness. And I don't see a lot of uh, narratives or hear a lot of narratives that talk about the grandeur, right? The, 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 the limitless possibilities of our own humanity. And so, and that's something that is deeply important to me as a human being. And so I wanted to find ways, and I, and I really worked to find ways to produce that in, in a manner that um, is aligned with my own artistic practice. The idea of storytelling, um, the idea of creating a figurative, but also extremely engaging work that produces grandeur, that produces awe, that produces questions um, in the viewer, you know, and, and, and so, to engage with these ideas and these realities, but then also to feel that there's enough human experience embedded within the pieces that people feel like they can engage within those pieces as they are. Murals can speak in the public space and they can create deep meaning. It's funny enough, I kind of view the city as a gallery. I view a lot, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at cracks in the sidewalk, I look at tags on the side of buildings, I look at how the city is always morphing and always changing and how it does inform our realities and what we encounter in the city and, and how we move through it, um, how it changes, how it stays the same, um, affects us and changes our reality. I do think that the public sphere is a great place to place these images and these images are constructed to hold space in the public sphere. I use materials that will last a long time. So um, it'll continue to stay on the wall. 
right? And, and, and so I look at like old sign paintings on old buildings and you see these ghost images and you see like these things where it's like, oh damn, this was a butcher shop. 50 years ago. Oh, that's that's amazing. Like you you see the history of the city and your place. And I think that that has a profound effect on us as human beings. I'm in a place that has history. And I think that's important because if everything is too new, where's our roots, right? If everything looks the same, there's no real sense of, of age. And there's no real sense of like, kind of like that poetry that happens when things decay and things get built around it and incorporated it into. And I think that uh, it's a reflection of my own sense of humanity. The materials I use are like, if, if this is gonna be painted over, like it'll be here for a hundred years. And it'll just be a, another kind of piece of texture in the landscape of the city. So now I feel like I can create place in a different way. Like I can now impact the landscape of what I feel like is my second home, is the Bay Area.